So I've been playing with the idea of getting a fake iPhone XS for a long time. I had plenty of fake iPhones a few years ago, and I wanted to see if they got any better. I visited dhgate.com, which is a great marketplace for these devices, and looked for any of those replicas. You will find them under the name Goofone on the marketplace, and they sell for something between $70 and $120. But be really careful from which buyer you buy, because many of them fake the internal specifications, and I will later show you how they do it. So I've ordered one Goofone without Apple logo, with 1GB of RAM, 4GB of ROM, a MediaTek 6580 chipset, and Android 5.1 Lollipop. The so-called battery should have 1800 mAh. Alright, so that sounded quite okay for the cheap price. But I didn't expect what I actually received in my mailbox. Now first of all, I really thought that Tim Cook sent me an iPhone sample, but that was too good to be true. So I've got a box which said iPhone 10, 256GB, designed by Apple in California. The box looks so real that it almost fooled a tech YouTuber who reviews phones for almost 6 years. The accessories look quite legit at the first look, but the headphones sound very flat and the charger charges way slower and has a wrong label on it. The Apple logo on the phone was covered by a sticker, which is funny, because the whole box has Apple logos all over it. Now it's really stunning how real this fake looked at the first glance, but once I turned it on, I was welcomed by heavy LCD bleeding while the Apple logo shows up, and it boots into something that looks very much like iOS. Then there's also a fake notch that's rendered into the background of the wallpaper, so it's really ridiculous. The actual notch, which is not even a notch, does nothing, except making your display smaller and giving the phone a bad look. I won't waste my time and your time and go through all the features and bring you a real review, but I'll quickly show you some things I've noticed. Now the launcher which runs on top of Android Lollipop looks a lot like iOS 10. But I noticed really heavy lags during swiping through the pages and scrolling in the menu. Many of the apps look identical to their iOS versions, now the Calculate and the Stock apps are seemingly identical to those in iOS. The camera menus and the interface looks exactly the same like in iOS. The settings menu looks close to identical and has many of the same settings you would find on an iPhone, but once you have a closer look, you actually can't be fooled. Now once I started trying some of Apple's more recent and advanced features, things started going off the rails. Now Siri's graphical interface has been recreated, but it doesn't really work, it actually does nothing. Also Face ID almost locked me out of the phone, as it didn't recognize me anymore. The camera itself works, but its quality on the front and rear is like on a Galaxy S2 smartphone back in the days. Also the white balance is totally wrong and you keep having an orange tan all the time. Now video recording even crashed the phone. So using it for the first day felt largely like using a phone that was 8 years old, with a buggy software that mostly worked but crashes from time to time. I was able to send some emails from throwaway accounts, browse the internet, take some photos and screenshots, and generally complete tasks with the phone if it didn't crash, but it took more than 5 times as long as on my daily driver, the P20 Pro. But why is this device so cheap? Now first of all, the hardware gets faked and it uses incredibly old internals. Now my phone actually just came with 512MB of RAM, which is barely enough to handle the heavily customized launcher. And also the battery is fake and lasts not even for 3 hours on a full charge, so it dropped 10% by using it just for 8 minutes. And also, there is another reason why the Chinese do it. They grab your data. The Vice magazine did send one of these replicas to a test lab and they checked it and found that the fake Safari app uses custom libraries that open a backdoor and allow hackers to run code on the phone remotely. Now last year, Google removed 500 apps that had more than 100 million downloads combined from the Play Store because they included one of those libraries. So be really careful when using the phone, don't use it for your personal data because that'll all go to Chinese servers. I even tried to run a different launcher on it, but the notch, the settings and more are hard-coded in the firmware, so in order to get a clean ROM on it, it would be needed to rewrite the whole firmware. 
Now since I have no use case for an iPhone lookalike that is barely fast enough to run the most basic things and has only 3 hours battery life, I've opened it up to have a closer look inside. Now I was really surprised, the chassis quality is really good, but as soon as I had a look at the main PCB, I've seen where they save costs. The rear camera is a single camera with a dummy module in the plastic cover. The battery looks like a 1400mAh battery and the chipset is a low budget chipset that has been released in early 2015. Also, they use very cheap Hynix RAM with only 512MB of RAM. In the next video we'll have an in-depth look at the components and I'll show you how much it actually costs to build such a fake iPhone. But for now guys, let's get to my final conclusion about those fake iPhones. Alright guys, so we're now here at the end of this video and there's some very important things I quickly want to talk about. First of all, there's really cheap hardware inside of these iPhone replicas. So they use outdated chipsets, the MediaTek 6580, which was a low-end chipset even a couple of years ago when this was used in $50 smartphones. And now they're actually reusing them in fake iPhones like this here and then they sell it for over $100. So you can buy the chipset for, I don't know, 50 cents, $1, $2 in the market and then just design a PCB which fits in that case and then sell it as an iPhone replica with very shitty specifications. Also, as you did see, it was advertised with 1GB of RAM, I got 512MB, because they can actually fake all the specifications. So in China you get something on the spec list, you buy 4 8GB of RAM, in reality you get 512MB, but they can make it look inside the smartphone like it would have 8 gigs of RAM. It's very easy to trick you. So actually you just have to modify the Android build prop. And I did that years ago on Chinese smartphones. Literally, you have to open that up with a text editor, change a few numbers, and then people think the device is running Android uh, iOS 11 instead of Android 5.1, or has 5 gigabytes of RAM instead of 512 megabytes of RAM. So it's a very easy trick, just change a few numbers, but that doesn't make the device better. So as you can see, I press now the power button, I swipe up, this is really incredibly slow. It lags all the time when using it and this smartphone is really not a lot of fun to use. So they use really the cheapest of the cheapest hardware and the biggest problem here is the battery. Because the battery dies within a couple of hours. So this phone is not usable for me from a hardware point of view. Second of all, which is way worse than the whole fake hardware and low-end hardware part, is that there is malware included or spyware on the smartphone. So there is an iCloud login in the settings, but just think about what that will do. There is no support for iCloud on Android. So wherever you log in with your iCloud data on this device, it will send the login information to some Chinese server. And they won't change your password so you know that you're hacked. Actually, they will just monitor all your data, what's going on, they will collect the data, and yeah, a lot of data is a lot of money. So, well guys, be really careful with what device you're really using on a daily basis. I mean, it's fun to use that smartphone with throwaway accounts, well, I really don't care. But really guys, this device here has probably some hidden malware. There are some really um, good tests on the internet, which I will link you down below, where they found a lot of suspicious apps and outgoing and ingoing traffic on the smartphone, which really looks bad. Now the next thing is, it's just a waste of money. So well, 100 euros, it's probably not a lot for you guys. Maybe 100 euros is a lot for you guys. For me, it would be something to okay to waste it on something to have a look at it because it's interesting. But to use it as a daily driver, if 100 euros is a lot to you, really save your money, go with a Xiaomi smartphone, go with, um, just save up for a decent older spec hardware, um, I don't know, but just save your money and don't throw it away for an iPhone clone, which you can only illegally sell or not even use for yourself because it's that crappy. Yeah, the last point, it is illegal, guys. So it would be barely legal if there wouldn't be an Apple logo on it, but there is an Apple logo on it. So once, um, I think I told that story a few times, 
the customs did actually check my packages and there was an iPhone clone inside. Then I, I got a letter from the European customs uh, something blah 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 and they said to me um, they need to destroy it, I need to agree, if I don't agree I will have to pay 4000 euros. And if I do that again and a third time then I have to go to jail. So this is some really serious topic. So guys, be really careful with what you buy on the internet because the customs, they will say, hey, you bought, bought a new iPhone for 100 euros. So um, actually, it, it must be logical that there is something wrong with it. And that's probably um, yeah, stolen or a fake iPhone. They don't care if you don't know if it's fake or not because they will say, you bought something from China which looks fake and deal with it. So be really careful with it, otherwise you will lose a lot of money, the devices are really crappy, you don't want to use them on a daily basis, and if you sell them, it's illegal as well. All right guys, so that was my opinion on fake iPhones, better keep your hands off, but if you want to play around with that like me, there's a link down below to DHgate, and actually DHgate is a really nice marketplace because they have plenty of stuff from RC cars to plastic stuff to vapors to smartphones for very cheap prices but you need to watch out from which seller you buy i left you some links down below in the description as always guys keep your hands off fake iphones and if you have any questions then put them now down below in the comments so once again guys thank you so much for watching i'm steven from tech magnet and i'll catch you in the next one have a nice day bye